Welcome to your yoga practice today. I did want to say that if you um, have props, there will be an option to use them. And if you don't officially have props, um, dog leash, scarf, belt can be a strap. The, the most important one today would be a block or maybe just a, a hard cover book that's about as wide as this block. Um, and if you have a folding chair, it doesn't have to be a special yoga folding chair because um, we're not going to go through the middle, but we're going over the top. will be an option for that today. So you by lying on your back. Start with your knees bent. Allow the sacrum to settle. And then if it's comfortable to extend your heels away from the crown of your head, you can. Bring your awareness to your breath. And notice the quality of your breath before your practice. Notice if your chest feels tight or open. If your breath is short or long, if the inhales or the exhales bear more weight. And take a moment to intentionally deepen your breath. Bring your awareness to your diaphragm. And as you inhale, feel it expand downward. Allow your breath to touch into the bottoms of the feet and the tips of the toes. As you exhale, soften back and spread wide across the floor. Next inhale, allow the breath to fill the whole torso back bodies, side bodies, all the way up into the shoulders. And again, as you exhale, sink into the ground, support of the ground beneath you. One more big breath, expanding in all directions at once. And as you exhale, feeling that stacking of the bones and joints in the back body plane, the universal blueprint for optimal alignment and energetic flow through your body. And then let's do a quick scan through our physical bodies from the bottoms of your feet and the tips of your toes. As you inhale, pull your awareness up through your legs into your pelvis, your hips, your low back. Feel free to make any adjustments that you need to make to bring more ease, space, and freedom into your body. And then use the breath. Bring your awareness into places that feel tight and sore and stuck. And as you inhale deeply, gently open and expand those areas. As you exhale completely, consciously allow tension to leave your body with your breath. The next inhale pulls your awareness up your torso, into your shoulders, your neck, and your face. Once again, just notice where in your upper body you're holding tension today. Use the breath to bring your awareness there. Inhale, create space. Exhale, continue the conversation of consciously asking your body to soften, release, and let go. Particularly, um, noticing how your shoulder blades rest against and press into the earth. 
Notice if one shoulder is held up away from the ground more than the other and send your breath there. Expand from the inside out and consciously ask that part of your body to soften more deeply, making note of any imbalances and then using the breath to work from the inside out to adjust, to center the body, to return it to more balance and evenness. Lastly, check in with your mind. Notice where your thoughts are at. Notice the speed at which they move through you. Allow yourself to step back from identifying as your thoughts and just witness their passing through your mind like clouds through the sky without getting attached or carried away, without judging yourself for what you're thinking about, but just beginning to notice habits and patterns in the way your mind turns and in the way that you speak to yourself. And then bring your awareness back and anchor it fully on your breath. Have a couple more of those deep, long breaths that fill the whole body from the inside out. And as you exhale, completely softening back, spreading wide connecting to the stacking of the bones and joints in your back body plane that allows the skeletal system to support you so that the muscles and particularly the organs of the heart and lungs don't have to work so hard as they do when the shoulders are hunched forward and all that weight is hanging on them. And then with an inhale, reach your arms up and overhead Give yourself a big stretch from fingertips to tippy toes. Exhale here. Inhale, draw your knees into your chest. And exhale, roll to the right side body. Press down with your palms to lift up. And return or come to a comfortable seated position. Keep your eyes closed for just another moment and look for that same alignment we just created laying on our backs, building our shapes from the foundation, from the ground up, finding the lightness that comes when the bones and joints stack. It is of the utmost importance that we inter-rotate our thigh bones, move the flesh of the buttocks out, and get the pelvis into a neutral position. If your pelvis is tilted back, you cannot align through the heart, the shoulders, the neck. And if that is the case, if you cannot lift from the base of your spine to bring the pelvic to a neutral position where both sits bones ground down evenly, then sit up on a book or a blanket or a pillow to give yourself that leverage to create space from grounding down through both sits bones inhale lift and lengthen through the crown of the head and the tips of the ears as you exhale roll your shoulder blades together down and into your back body that hugging of the center of the shoulder blades in towards the spine fully broadens the chest beware of the tendency to just arch your back and pop your low ribs out. The bones and joints are not stacked in the back body plane here. So just soften your low ribs down and back. Notice if your head is still jutting forward because we're usually here. So even when we roll our shoulders back, lift your chin parallel to the earth, slide your jawbone back, lift through the tips of your ears. Our spine is like an antenna that allows us to project and receive energetically. The heart is the center of our energetic body. 
So the fundamental um, quality of the heart is balance, where all where the energy of who you are meets the energy of the universe, and the place from which that we reach out and connect to others. The heart is also where the Atman or the soul resides. This practice teaches us that all the seeking we do out in the world, all the desires and the grasping and the um, fulfillment that we seek, the answers already lie within. In the heart, there's a kind of like essential blueprint of who you truly are, what your passion, your purpose, your gifts are. And it is through these things um, that you will create your happiness, your joy, and you will not even be able to help being a contribution to the world around yourself when you live from this place. Um, I read a really cool thing today that my friend Aislin wrote, and it was actually on um, Instagram. Her Instagram name is sing.with.trees. And um, she was talking about how um, all of like the stairways to heaven are opening right now. Um, one example is like the Aurora Borealis, but there are many um, energetic uh, centers and vortexes throughout the world where we are connected um, to the cosmos. And that at this particular time, a lot of stuff is opening up. She called these energies the dream streams of the earth and said that um, they have like the blueprint for the future of the planet. And that the way that we connect to receiving um, these imprints is by following our hearts. And that when we are connected in this meaningful way to who we are and what we have to contribute, it will always lead us back to um, this greater dream and greater vision for the planet. So being in alignment to express yourself without ever, without that ever needing to take advantage or take from others. Similarly, we don't need to sacrifice ourselves or throw ourselves under the bus for a good cause. By finding this balance between the aspects of ourselves, we learn to cultivate a balance in our energetic exchanges within relationship, community, and ecosystem. Um, another aspect of the heart is trust. So being willing to trust that you are an important part of a bigger picture and that um, sometimes keeping our heart open from a place of that strength and stability, shoulder blades on the back body is like the bravest thing we can do. Um, to not be sucked into the lies that come from our economic system that tell us that there isn't enough to go around or that you have to contort yourself and be a certain way in order to succeed. But having the strength, the stability, the bravery to remain open and vulnerable, to dream big for yourself and for the planet. With an inhale, you can reach your arms up and overhead. And exhale through your mouth with sound. <sighs> Release. One more time like that, beginning to clear your body out. Inhale deeply. And <sighs> exhale completely. We will chant the Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu chant. We will chant it call and response. We'll be using this chant throughout the week so you can learn it, become comfortable and familiar with it. Um, chanting is said to clear the passageway between the head and the heart. 
to really take us out of our head and drop us into our hearts um, so we can be guided from this place of connection, of balance, compassion, and trust. Um, these, cha these chants in Sanskrit have the energetic vibrations of um, holy people chanting them for thousands of years. So you are tapping into a frequency and receiving guidance and information um, as you deepen your practice chanting. So we'll own three times together. We'll chant call and response three times. I think I forgot to say the translation is, um, may all beings everywhere be happy and free. And may I contribute wholly to that happiness and freedom for all beings. Inhale deeply.
pause and feel those vibrations resonate through your body. And take a moment to connect more deeply to um, what your passions, purpose, and gift look like expressed in the world around you and how that can connect to our larger visions for humanity at this moment when there is so much opportunity because things are shifting so quickly and shortcomings in our systems are being revealed and the systems must be reworked. We'll take a moment to connect more deeply to our breath, cultivating ujjayi breath. Inhale and exhale through your nose. Tighten up through the back of your throat like you are fogging up a mirror. As you inhale and exhale through your nose. Allow that tightening in the back of the throat to generate a sound. The breath is like waves crashing on the shore. That sound creates a focal point to steady your mind throughout your practice. As you witness what arises, abides, and dissolves. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose is generally is, is how we want to practice yoga. It slows the breath down. Although whenever there is something you really want to <sighs> let go of, you can do a big exhale through the mouth with sound. But otherwise, we can continue this ujjayi breath throughout our practice. Um, tightening up the back of the throat also constricts the air passageway, which begins to generate a heat in the body. Sound and heat are two of the tools that we use to begin to clear our bodies out energetically. When you are ready with an inhale, gently open your eyes and we will come onto our hands and knees. Spread your fingers wide. Ground your knees under your hips and turn your biceps to face forward. This rotation in the arms is very important to the health and mobility of the shoulder joint. Maybe you can feel how it rolls the shoulders together on the back and broadens through the collarbone and chest. If you don't feel that yet, play with turning the inner elbows back towards you and feel what happens in the neck and shoulders. Remembering that we are always looking to create space in the body as we practice. With an inhale, drop your abdomen down, arch your back, tilt your tailbone up. As you exhale, press down and curl your spine to the ceiling. Continue at your own pace. <sighs> Utilizing that ujjayi breath. Sink the motions of your body with your breath. And allow the motion, allow the synchronicity to deepen the motions of the body. Come fully into the present moment. And move in any way that feels good to you within the confines of the shapes. Allowing the mind to connect and receive the wisdom of the body. It is all in there, everything we need. When you are ready, tuck your toes, lift your hips high and press back, downward facing dog. Feel free to pedal your feet, sway your hips, move in any way that feels good to you here to get your wiggles out and then find stillness. Build your connection to the shape from the ground up. Hands ground evenly with each other. Any imbalance at the foundation will have ripple effects up through the whole body. Feet as wide as the hips. Outer edge of your feet parallel with outer edge of your mat. 
As you inhale, lift them, spread your fingers and toes. Stretch them out, ground them down. Feel how that action engages the muscles in the forearms and shins. Initiating the action of drawing the energy in and up from the floor to the core. Inhale, lift your hips high. And exhale, press your thigh bones up and back to where the wall meets the ceiling. Feel the space that you create in your lower back and allow your head to hang heavy, allowing your neck to reflect that spaciousness in the lower back. Have one more big breath. And with an inhale, fall forward into your plank pose, pause here. With the hips at the height of the shoulders, which takes your thigh bones back a little bit, root your tailbone down towards your heels. From that activation in your legs, inhale, lift your abdomen towards your spine, and lift the back of your ribs to meet your shoulder blades. So that's very important. We can't roll our shoulders together and down our back if our shoulders are hanging down, right? So there's a lift from the underside of the pose. The muscles between the shoulder blades support the head as if the neck extends forward. With an exhale, lower knees, chest and chin to the floor. Press the tops of your feet down. Inhale, lift your heart. Roll your shoulders back. Everything on the ground is your foundation. It presses firmly down to lift your heart and crown. Shoulders roll all the way together down and center the shoulder blades into the back body. Broaden the chest and collarbone fully. And if you're crunching into one part of your neck, drop your chin down a little bit. One more big inhale here. And exhale, seat to heels, child's pose. Allow the weight of your hips to settle fully towards your heels. So even if they don't touch, there's always an energetic grounding action from the hips towards the heels, even when we turn ourselves upside down. And it's that grounding in the lower body that gives you the balance, the equal and opposite um, leverage to inhale and walk your fingertips forward. Breathe length and space into each vertebrae in the spine. We use the arms and legs to stretch the spine in this practice. We're gonna take a moment to work on our alignment in our arms in child's pose. So take your hands as wide as your shoulders and press down firmly through the hands to bring energy into the forearms and lift them up away from the ground. Keeping that, pull from your fingertips to the center of the back of your heart, drawing your shoulders down your back, away from your ears. We, we expand our awareness to do all these things at once, keeping both of those actions, index finger, knuckle mound, grounded as you begin to turn your biceps to face up, rolling the shoulders down the back, creating space in the chest, and then as you exhale, center of the shoulder blades, outer armpits, soften down towards the floor. Have three more deep, long breaths here, locking this into the muscle memory of your body. We you wanna open the shoulders from a place that is strong and stable and sustainable with the shoulders engaged and aligned on the back body, not just like collapsing and sinking down. Keep that as you tuck your toes, lift your hips high, and press back, downward facing dog. Same activation and alignment in the arms. Inhale, lift and spread your fingers and toes, lift your abdomen towards your spine, and lift your hips high. As you exhale, press your thigh bones up and back to where the wall meets the ceiling to create length and space in your lower back. Continue pressing firmly into your hands, engaging the forearms, lifting them away from the floor as you pull from the fingertips to the center of the back of the heart. Biceps turn to face forward. Keep your index knuckle mound grounded. And then take the center of your shoulder blades 
up and back towards your thigh bones while your thigh bones move up and back to where the wall meets the ceiling. So the shoulders don't hang down and collapse towards the floor. They're engaged and they're moving up and back. Have three more deep long breaths. <sighs> Inhale, walk your feet forward to meet your hands. Come into that standing forward bend at the front of your mat. You're welcome to work with the legs straight or the legs bent, but let your head hang heavy. Let your shoulders soften by your ears for the one and only time throughout the practice. Shake your head yes and no. Grab, grab opposite elbows and sway if that feels good to you. Release all the tension from the back, the shoulders and the neck. Let it go through the crown of your head. With an inhale, return to center and exhale through the mouth of sound. <sighs> Release the arms down. Next inhale, reach your arms up and overhead, come to stand. Exhale, release your arms down by your sides. Tadasana, mountain pose. Good. Just checking in a little bit with your alignment. Um, Tadasana Mountain Pose is the template for all the other poses. Feet as wide as the hips. Outer edge of your feet parallel with outer edge of your mat. Stick your booty out and take your thigh bones back a little bit so the center of your hips come over the knees and ankles. As you have your thigh bones back, it's a balance of these two actions. Center of your buttocks draws into the midline to root your tailbone down, beginning to lift the frontal hip bones, initiating the lift of the whole front body, the whole torso away from the pelvis. Turn your palms to face forward and feel how that rolls your shoulders together and down the back. That same rotation in the arms, that's really important because if we don't rotate our arms um, and ex from anatomic position, it's considered the external rotation of the biceps. If we don't do that, we can't lift our arms overhead. Um, you can turn your palms to face behind you and try to lift your arms overhead. So if we are doing this in our downward facing dog, we're basically destroying our shoulder joint. So we want to really become conscious and aware of this Rotation in the arms that rolls the shoulders back. Inhale, reach your arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen your spine and press down into your palms to roll your shoulders down your back. Exhale, fold more deeply. Back of the neck extends, crown of the head to the floor. Continue pressing down through the fingertips to lift the shoulders up. Let's do that a few more times. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen, roll the shoulders down the back. Exhale, fold forward more deeply, roll the shoulders down the back. One more time on your own. We just want to learn how to engage the shoulders, even when we're upside down. And then inhale, gaze forward, lengthen. Exhale, ground your palms, step or jump back to plank pose. We're going to take a moment to go really thoroughly through the alignment of Chaturanga Dandasana because we do it all the time. We're going to lower the knees for this first one. Lift the back of the ribs to meet the shoulder blades. Roll your shoulders down your back and extend the crown of the head forward. And as you lower, you're bending the elbows straight back and just to 90 degrees. So the chest has to shift way forward. We still are lifting our ribs to meet the shoulder blades as we lower. We're keeping one long line of energy through the body. Chaturanga means four points. Dandasana staff pose. And inhale, lift up. In upward dog, roll the shoulders back. Turn the biceps forward. And exhale, lift your hips high. Return to your breath. Maybe you noticed how freaking hard it is 
to do Chaturanga Dandasana in proper alignment. But again, what's the point of um, practicing out of alignment? It's only straining your body and building the muscles um, improperly. So we're gonna continue to keep our awareness on that engagement and alignment between the shoulder blades as we move through our next two sun salutations. With an inhale, gaze forward. Step or jump your feet to meet your hands. Exhale, fold deeply into your legs. Inhale, reach your arms up and overhead, come to stand. Exhale, release your arms by your sides. Tadasana, check in with your alignment. Find the stacking of the bones and joints that brings a lightness. And inhale, reach your arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen your spine, shoulders back. Exhale, ground your palms, step or jump back. The shoulders are still on the back, which means we're lifting the ribs up. You're welcome to keep, to keep your knees lifted or to use your knees, but we're keeping that lift between the shoulder blades as you shift your weight way forward and bend your elbows just to 90 degrees. Press the tops of the feet down. Inhale, lift your heart. Biceps turn forward, center of the shoulder blades into the spine. Exhale, lift your hips high. Return to your breath, downward facing dog. The element of the heart is air associated with the lungs. As you inhale, pull in and up from the floor to the core, lift your hips high. And as you exhale, thigh bones back. Center of the shoulder blades up and back to the thigh bones. Open your shoulders from a place that is engaged and aligned. Three more deep, long breaths. Remembering that the breath, the air provides everything that we need our connections to past, present, and future, all sentient beings, the support of the earth and the trees. With an inhale, gaze forward, step or jump your feet to meet your hands, lengthen through your spine, and exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, reach your arms up and overhead, come to stand, Tadasana, mountain pose. Make any adjustments you need to make to bring your body to center. And inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen your spine. Exhale, ground your palms, step or jump back to plank. Find that one line of energy through the body by lifting from the other side of the pose. Keep your low rib or your back ribs lifting to your shoulder blades, your neck long as you exhale and bend your elbows just to 90 degrees. Inhale, lift your heart. Roll your shoulders into your back body. Exhale, lift your hips. Downward facing dog. Five breaths. <sighs> With an inhale, gaze forward, step or jump your feet to meet your hands, get length through your spine, and exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, reach your arms up and overhead, come to stand, Tadasana, mountain pose. Now we're moving into Surya Namaskar B. Inhale, arms reach up, Drop your feet, chair pose. 
Same action, sticking your thigh bones back, booty out to get low, and rooting your tailbone down by drawing the center of the buttocks into the midline to lift the frontal hip bones, to lean back to stack the vertebrae. We stretch through our fingertips with the biceps rotating in towards the base and even back behind you so that we have the leverage to soften the shoulders down the back, soften your low ribs down and back. With your next exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen your spine. Exhale, ground your palms, step or jump back. Move through a vinyasa or come to downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg high. Exhale, step it through between your hands and inhale, rise. Warrior one at the top of your breath. Pull your legs energetically towards each other, drawing your right hip back, your left hip forward, inner rotating that back thigh. So as the hips face forward, you can root your tailbone down. Lift your frontal hip bones, reach the whole front body long, soften your shoulders down your back and your low ribs down and back. With your next exhale, release. Ground your palms, step back. Move through a vinyasa or come to down dog. No judgment about what choice is right for you today. Inhale your left leg high. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, rise, warrior one. Again, we're energetically scissoring the legs towards each other to inner rotate the back thigh. Bring your hips to face forward. Tailbone roots down, whole center of the buttocks moves forward to open up that back hip flexor. From the grounding of the lower body, you lift the frontal hip bones, lift the abdomen, the heart, the crown of the head, stretch through the fingertips and then pull the shoulders together down and into the back body. Soften your low ribs for one more breath. And exhale, release, ground your palms, step back. Move through a vinyasa or come to down dog or child's pose. Wherever you're working, return your awareness to your breath. Allow the breath to fill the body from the inside out. Breathe it into all those places that feel tight and sore and stuck. And as you exhale completely, <sighs> continuing the conversation of consciously asking, not just the body, but the mind to soften. The heart symbolizes that sweet spot, that balance between form and flow between um, control and letting go that enables us to actively shape and then also receive the evolution of ourselves and our world. We'll meet back in downward facing dog and with an inhale gaze forward Step or jump your feet to meet your hands. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, drop your seat, arms reach up, chair pose. Exhale, stand tall, Tadasana, mountain pose. Again, inhale, arms reach up, drop the seat, thigh bones back, center of your buttocks into the midline to lift, crown of the head and fingertips. Soften the shoulders down the back. Soften your low ribs down and back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, ground your palms, step or jump back. Moving through a vinyasa or coming to child's pose. Oh, no, sorry, coming to downward dog. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, rise, warrior one. 
Exhale, interlace your hands behind your back. Inhale, lift your frontal hip bones and your sternum. Exhale, fold forward on the inside edge of your front knee. Bowing warrior. Gaze at your hips and see what adjustments you need to make to bring balance and evenness. Breathe that balance and evenness from the pelvis into the side bodies and sides of the neck. Shoulders are still drawing together and down your back. As you exhale, head hangs heavy and the arms draw more actively towards the front of the room. One more breath. And exhale, release, ground your palms, step back, come to downward facing dog or move through a vinyasa, your choice. Inhale your left leg high. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, rise warrior one. Exhale, switch off the crossing as you interlace your hands behind your back. Lift your frontal hip bones and your sternum. Exhale, fold forward. Hinging at your hips, coming down on the inside edge of that front knee. Looking back at the pelvis, making any adjustments you need to make. Breathe length and space into both side bodies and sides of your neck. Draw your shoulders together and down your back. Let your head hang heavy and draw the arms more actively towards the front of the room. One more big breath. And <sighs> release. Step back, there's a down dog, a child's pose, and or a vinyasa. Feel the heat that you are generating in the body. Breathe it into those places that are tight, sore, and stuck. As you exhale, <sighs> where can you soften? Release judgment. Get out of your own way a little bit. Wherever you're at, three more deep long breaths. And with an inhale, gaze forward, or meet in down dog, and then gaze forward. Sever, jump your feet to meet your hands. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, drop your seat, arms reach up, chair pose. Exhale, stand tall. Tadasana, mountain pose. Um, if you have a block or a book to use as a block handy, just, just place it by the front of your mat because we're on our way to using that. One more sun salutation B. Adding on a little variation. Inhale, arms reach up, drop your seat, chair pose. Exhale, fold deeply over your legs. Inhale, gaze forward, get leg. Exhale, round your palms, step or jump back to plank. Come to down dog or move through a vinyasa, keeping your awareness on those muscles between your shoulder blades. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, rise where you're bun. Interlace your hands behind your back. Next, inhale, lifts the frontal hip bones and the sternum. Exhale, fall forward, bowing warrior. One more big inhale here. And exhale, ground both your hands on the inside edge of your front foot. If it is accessible, to lower onto the forearms here, you can do that. Place the block between your index fingers and thumb. If it feels like a lot on the hips, you can step back first and then lower onto your forearms. In a forearm plank, the hips at the height of the shoulders, lifting the back of the ribs, roll the shoulders down your back, extend through your neck, and inhale, begin to walk your feet in, lifting your hips high for a dolphin pose. The shoulders stack over the elbows, and then look through and move the head and the 
Center of the shoulder blades up and back towards your thigh bones. Keep that as you inhale, gaze forward again. Stay here or inhale and lift your left leg up. Have three breaths. Lift from the inner thigh in the center of the heel. Press your right thigh bone back. Lift your abdomen towards your spine and the back of your ribs to meet your shoulder blades. Gaze between your forearms. With an exhale, release the left leg down. Press into the hands to lift the forearms up. Downward dog. Stay in down dog or move through a vinyasa, your choice. And then with an inhale, lift your left leg high. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, rise where you're going. Exhale, switch out the crossing of the hands behind the back. Inhale, lift the sternum and the frontal hip bones. Exhale, fold deeply. One more big inhale. And exhale, ground both hands inside your front foot. Flip out onto the ball of the back foot. And you can lower onto the forearms here and step back. Or you can step back and lower onto the forearms. With the L of the thumbs and the index finger, hugs into the book or the block. Hips at the height of the shoulders, root your tailbone down. Lift your abdomen and the back of your ribs to meet your shoulder blades. Roll the shoulders down the back and extend your neck forward. Inhale, walk the feet in, lift the hips high. Dolphin pose. Gaze up and back between your arms towards your thighs. Keep your shoulders over your elbows as you take the center of the shoulder blades up and back to open. Gaze forward again. Welcome to stay here or to inhale and lift your right leg for three breaths. Lift from the inner thigh in the center of your heel. Left thigh bone presses back. Abdomen and back of the ribs lift to meet the back body. Gaze is between your forearms. With an exhale, release. Press down with the forearms to, with the hands to lift the forearms up. You're in your down dog. Maybe you stay here or come into a child's pose. Maybe you float forward and move through a vinyasa. Wherever you're working, return to your breath. Allow the breath to be deep and long. Cultivating that balance and evenness in the breath that brings balance and evenness into the heart rate and the speed of the thoughts through the mind. Whew. I am kicking my own ass. I'm so sweaty. Um, we've had such a nice spring that I've been keeping my windows open, but I'm feeling pretty crazy right now about it. Wherever you are, three more deep, long breaths. And then we'll meet in downward facing dog. So this work of creating the strength and stability to have openness and vulnerability is hard. We'll meet in down dog. And with an inhale, gaze forward, step or jump your feet to meet your hands. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, drop your seat, arms reach up, chair pose. Exhale, stand tall. Tadasana. How are you guys doing? Woo. Um, I'm gonna just take a moment to redo the Instagram video. So we can have a little water and a break. Ah. <laughs> I'm like so sweaty. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Oops. OK, 
Okay, so pretty much every class throughout the week builds on itself. We're gonna move into our um, side, uh, hips open in the side body plane poses. And we are working on binds this week. So if you have a scarf, a strap, a belt, a dog leash, anything, um, it can help us create more space in our bodies while we bind so that the is in alignment and we can move into more challenging poses bound. So have that strap handy if you have a strap. Inhale, reach your arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. We're gonna move through an arm balance. So you're gonna take your feet wide and round your hands between your feet and back behind your heels. Slight bend in the elbows, you're sitting back on your upper arms. And then you can cross your feet or eventually you can extend through the heels for Titi Basana, fire five pose. Wherever you're working, have a few breaths and then play with lifting the back of the ribs and lifting the abdomen to lift the hips. We bend the knees and shift into our crow pose. Have a few breaths in your crow pose. If you need to regroup, uh, that's fine, I usually do. But find that lift between the shoulder blades. Elbows stacked over the wrist, gaze way forward, and then play with kicking your feet back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Move through a vinyasa. We'll meet in downward facing dog. <sighs> Just remembering that there are always new possibilities to add on to our practice and our creation of our lives. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, rise, warrior two, open to the side. Deep bend in your front knee, right over your front ankle. Back thigh bone is slightly inter-rotated, so the femur grounds in the hip socket, and then both thigh bones press back. Hips fully open in your side body plane, and then Inhale and pull up and back, peaceful warrior. Left arm reaches around behind for the right buttock or thigh bone. Drawing it down and into the midline of your body. Have three breaths. And inhale, begin to straighten your front leg. Stretch forward and down into your triangle pose. You can ground your hand on your shin or on the floor behind your leg. But either way, the back thigh bone is back, stacked in line with the knee and ankle. The front thigh bone presses back and the butt hugs into the midline of the body to stack the hips. Breathe that length and space into both side bodies, sides of your neck. You can keep this half bind or extend the left arm up and press through the palms to roll your shoulders together down and into your back. Three breaths. And inhale, rise. Exhale, a deep bend in your front knee again. And this time your hands coming to the floor in front of your foot. The front knee still stacking over the front ankle. Back thigh bone back. Press from the tailbone through the back heel, the back edge of the back foot. And inhale, draw your arm over your ear. One more line of energy through your body. You can stay here or take that left arm around behind your back. Maybe your right arm can thread under your right leg for the bind. And maybe you want to use your strap. For today, I'm gonna to use my strap because it just creates more space in my body. Pull in opposite directions with your hands and use that as leverage to roll your shoulders together down and into the back. Three breaths. Stay bound if you can. 
As you gaze down towards your right foot, hop your back foot in. You're gonna gaze towards the right side of your mat as you lean and shift your weight onto your right foot for a bound half moon pose. Big toe bound stays grounded as you begin to lift the back leg. Wherever you are working, standing thigh bone back, press through both heels, have three more deep long breaths. Ah! And with an exhale release, come into a standing forward fold at the front of your mat. Let your head hang heavy. Shake it yes and no. I realized a sequencing change I should make, but we're just gonna skip it. Uh -huh. When you're ready, inhale, gaze forward, get length. Exhale, round your palms, step or jump back. Move through a vinyasa or come to down dog. We'll have a few breaths. And then inhale, lift your left leg. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, rise and open to the side. Warrior two. Front knee stacks over your front ankle. Back thigh bone slightly inner rotated. Both thigh bones press back to fully open the hips and the side body plane. Inhale, lift your frontal hip bones and lift the arm up and back. Right arm reaches around behind your back to root the buttock down and in on the left side. Three breaths. And then inhale, begin to straighten your front leg. Widen your back hip back as you cut your front thigh bone back. Stretch your side body as long. Come down into your triangle pose. That back thigh bone is back in line with the knee and ankle. And the front thigh bone moves back towards the back thigh bone and your butt hugs into the midline to lift the back hip up. You can stay in this half bind shape or extend your arm up, but either way you're breathing length and space into your spine and then pressing out through the hands to get the leverage to roll the shoulders together down and into your back. Three breaths. Inhale, rise. Exhale that deep bend in your front knee. Fingertips to the floor in front of your foot for today. Back thigh bone back. Press from your tailbone through the back heel and the back edge of the back foot. Inhale, lift your abdomen towards your spine and stretch your arms overhead, your arm overhead. You can stay here or you can reach that right arm behind the back to ground the thigh bone down and press the buttock into the midline. Maybe if you did so on the other side, take your strap into your right hand, drop it down behind your back and grab it with your left hand. Pull the strap in opposite directions to roll your shoulders together down and into your back body for three more deep long breaths. And gaze down towards your left foot. Pop your back foot in, shift your weight and your gaze to the left foot, gazing to the outside in front of blah, blah, blah. And press down through your big toe mount to lift up. Press out through both heels. Find that same stacking of your bones and joints in the bind for three more deep long breaths. And forward fold at the front of your mat. Let your head hang heavy. Shake it out, yes and no. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen. Exhale, ground your palms, step or jump back. Move through a vinyasa or come to. Let's all meet in child's pose. Uh, 
Right. Rise onto your knees. Knees as wide as the hips. Um, feet extend straight back from the knees. The whole top of the foot and the shin pressing down firmly. That's your foundation. Interlace your hands behind your back. Inhale, lift your frontal hip bones and your sternum. Exhale, draw your arms away from your back body. Inhale, lift your sternum and your gaze. Exhale, continue to draw your arms away. Three more deep, long breaths. If you want to release your hands to your heels, you can, but you don't want to collapse into the low back or the neck. Three breaths, a uniform curve through your spine. Lifting from the back of the heart up. And with an inhale, oh, rise. The head is the last thing to rise. Sit back on or between your heels in Parasana. If this is sharp shooting painful for the knees or hips, choose another position. Just have a few breaths. Um, if you're sitting between your heels, you can rest your palms on the bottom of your feet, which will roll your shoulders back. The pelvis is in a neutral position, so you can really feel that lightness that comes into the body when your bones and joints stack. With an inhale, rise one more time onto your knees. Switch up the crossing of your hands behind your back. Root your tailbone down, center of your buttocks into the midline so your hips stay over your knees. And this protects your lower back as you're back bending. Inhale, lift the sternum. Pull your arms away from your back body. Again, root your tailbone down, lift your sternum and your gaze. Pull your arms away more. Three more breaths, leaning back. Maybe you can ground your fingertips on your heels, but you only want to do that if you're not collapsing into the lower back or neck. Lift from the back of the heart up. And with an inhale, rise. <laughs> and one more time. Sit back on or between your heels. <sighs> You can stay here, or if your buttocks is grounded on the floor, you can start to lean back. When you lean back, you have to lift your hips and root your tailbone down towards your knees so you're not crunching your lower back. Maybe you can come down onto your forearms here. If that feels okay, if it's not causing any shooting pains in your knees or your back, then maybe you can again lift your pelvis, root your tailbone down towards your heels, and come to lay all the way down on your back. Wherever you're working, five breaths. Even here, the low ribs soften down and back. We don't want to let our knees splay out. The knees are still together. The thighs are together. When you are ready to come up, press your palms down at the sides of your body, maybe even a little bit up like by your head, but extend it out. And you're pressing down with the hands and you're lifting the heart, allowing your head to be the last thing to rise. Go ahead. And then we'll come to lay on our back. We're going to do a few more back bends. The first one is bridge pose. And then we'll do a full wheel if you would like. I'll give you an option to do the full wheel supported on a folding chair because it's actually one of my favorite ways to receive the benefits of the back bends. And then we'll add on one more variation. Um, of a back bend at the end of all that. And I know we're running out of time, but we're going to make it. <laughs> okay. 
Um, lay on your back, your knees bent in close to your buttocks, outer edge of your feet parallel with the outer edge of the mat. We do not want our feet to turn out here. I don't know if you can see it, but when our feet turn out and we lift our hips, we're just crunching our lower back. So the feet being parallel with the outer edge of the mat is important. Press the back of your head and shoulders firmly into the floor. And with an inhale, lift your pelvis, your low back, your middle back. Um, you can interlace your hands behind your back or just roll your palms to face up to roll your shoulders under. I like to place my index finger on the inside of my heel to give me some leverage. Everything on the ground presses firmly down into the ground to lift the heart, which is the focal point of this pose. From your heart, extend through your knees. From your heart, extend through your crown. Have three more deep bone breaths. Lifting the upper arm, the, the back ribs away from your upper arms. And with your exhale, release. Resist the urge to draw your knees into your chest, but you can sway them from side to side a bit. Um, the next opportunity is a full wheel pose, which I will talk you through. But you're always welcome to take bridge pose again. I'm also going to show you the variation on the chair. Many of you that have practiced with me before uh, have done this. So just super quickly. You're seated, seated on the chair. It's often helpful to play, you want your mat on a, you want your chair on a mat, seated on the chair. If you have it, it's nice to put another mat over the back of your chair. Most important thing is you ground your toes on your, the floor and place your heel, the rest of your foot on the chair. That's gonna anchor you. You might have to scoot the hips forward or back, depending on the length of your torso. But when you lean back against this back bar of the chair, you want the low to center, you want the center of your shoulder blades scat trapped. We begin with our hands as wide as our shoulders, palms facing forward, initiating that same rotation in the arms. And then with an inhale, you can stretch the arms back. You can stay right here and get a deep back bend, working on strengthening the front of your throat so you're not just collapsing your head. If you want to take it further, step down onto the legs of the chair to lift your hips up, lean back, have five to 10 breaths. When you're ready to come out, you're just sitting back down. You can support your head in your hands if you'd like. Lead with your heart and gaze forward with your eyes open. Cool. If you're still laying on the floor, we'll come into a full wheel. Bend your knees, ground your feet in close to your buttocks. Ground your palms by your ears, fingertips facing towards you. We'll all start with bridge pose, pressing down into the back of the head and shoulders to lift your hips. You're welcome to stay here or to press into the four corners of the hands and feet to lift up. You can pause on your, the crown of your head to make any adjustments you need to make. We want our elbows over our wrists and our elbows hugging in towards each other as you extend your arms. Pressing down to lift the outer hips. Still rooting your tailbone towards your heels. Still tucking your low ribs down and back. Three more deep bone breaths wherever you're working. And with an exhale release, feel free to pause on the crown if that's helpful to you, and then tuck your chin down. Again, resist the urge to draw your knees into your chest just yet. If you would like, you can sway them from side to side a little bit. Um, so we will do one more back bend, and we'll move into Viparita Dandasana. Vipada, which is a inverted snap pose. So it's basically the pose we just did, but on the forearms and head. Um, I'm going to show you one more, more restorative version of a, of a bridge pose, if that's more the speed of what you're looking for. If you have your book or a block handy, 
Bend the knees, round the feet and close to your buttocks. Press down with your pelvis, with your heels to lift your pelvis. And you can place the book or the block beneath your pelvis for a supported bridge pose. You are also welcome to take bridge pose again or to take full wheel and not come down onto the forearms. But if you would like to try full wheel or this other variation, ground your hands by your ears, fingertips facing towards you. Press down with the heels to lift the pelvis, the low back, the middle back. Lengthen your tailbone and then press down with the palms to rise. We're gonna lower onto the crown of the head and then we're gonna take our hands and arms like we would in headstand. Elbows grounded as wide as the shoulders. Hands interlaced, cradling the back of your head. Have a few breaths here, everything on the ground, pressing firmly down to lift the outer hips. The center of the heart is hugging into the midline of the body, the back body. Whenever you are ready, Release your hands and ground them. Press down and lift your head, tuck your chin to your chest, lower onto your back. Woo woo! Y'all are killing it. Sway your knees from side to side. And we will close out with some variation of shoulder sand plow pose or knee to ear pose. The foundation for that pose is the same as bridge pose. Press the back of your head and the back of your shoulders into your mat. There will be some weight bearing on the, mostly the shoulders and forearms, but on the neck so you do not turn your head when you come into any variation of shoulder, or shoulder stand or plow pose. Uh, ground your fingertips or grab the mat by your hips and use that as leverage to kick your feet up and overhead. Plow pose. If your feet touch the floor, you can interlace your hands behind your back to roll your shoulders under. If your feet don't touch the floor, just bend your knees into your chest and bring your hands right onto your back. If the feet don't touch the floor, you're gonna extend the legs straight up for shoulder stand. If the feet are touching the floor, you can stay and plow if that feels good to you. Roll the shoulders under, or even bend the knees in by the ears to stretch out those muscles between the shoulder blades that we've been working. If you are up in your shoulder stand, pressing down through the back of the head, the shoulders, the upper arms, to lift up through the heels, the thigh bones, back, booty out slightly, and then draw the center of your buttocks into the midline. That same stacking of the bones and joints we've been looking for in all the shapes. If you're staying in plow pose, thigh bones lifting up to lengthen the lower back, Wherever you're working, have five more deep, long breaths. When you're ready, drop the feet down behind you and roll your spine out. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Feel free to take any final pose your body may be suggesting it would like. And then to make your way into your favorite version of Shavasana. If you have the chair handy, my favorite version of Shavasana is with my calves on the chair. Um, you could also put your legs up the wall or your legs on a bolster or even create a similar sensation by just taking the feet wide, knees bent, and let the legs fall towards each other. If you're comfortable by it flat on your back, that's also fine. <clears throat> Palms can rest on your abdomen or facing up at like a 30 degree angle from the sides of your body. This turning of the palms up helps to roll the shoulders back. Wherever you find yourself, return to your breath. Allow your breath to be so deep and so long that it touches down into the bottoms of your feet and the tips of your toes. 
And as you exhale, completely soften back and spread wide across the floor. Allow any residual tension, anxiety, self-doubt to leave your body with your breath through your fingertips. So through this practice, we clear out and let go of problematic conditioning that is keeping us from connecting to our passions, purpose, and gifts. We create space to remember what those are, who we truly are, to receive guidance from our ancestors, the earth, the world around us, and to connect our dreams to the larger dreams of humanity. Breathe deeply into your heart, allowing it to expand in all directions. And as you exhale completely, allow the back of the heart to open and sink through the heart space, through the floor, down into a tunnel through the earth that leads you to the center of the earth. Continue to fill your heart with breath and to soften down and back into that heart space. Open to the guidance, inspiration, information that awaits you there.
Take this moment to savor any hope, trust, faith that you cultivated in your mind or your body through your practice today. And begin to intentionally deepen your inhale. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Look like you have to gently sway your head from side to side. With an inhale, reach your arms up and overhead. Give yourself a big stretch from fingertips to tippy toes. Exhale here. Inhale, draw your knees into your chest. And exhale, roll to the right side body. Pause for a moment in this fetal position. Gather your bearings as you transition back into everyday life. Press down with your palms to lift up. Come to a comfortable seated position. Keep your eyes closed for just another moment. Check back in. Observe the quality of your breath, the tension in your body, the speed of your thoughts through your mind at this point in your practice, or at this point after your practice, there we go. And then return your awareness to anchor fully on your breath. We will seal our collective efforts with a single OM. Inhale deeply to prepare. Uh, Bring your hands to your heart and bow your head in gratitude for the tools of this practice that remind us the strongest things are the most soft, the most open, the most gentle. Thank you. You're welcome. And how are you guys doing? Ah, good. How was that last pose for y'all? The um, the one where we were doing a bind and half moon. Yeah, that was difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually meaning the back bend on your elbows, but if you oh. have certain questions or anything about them, you know, feel free to. Ask. Hi, Peyton. Hey, what's up? How are you doing? Good. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna stop. Um. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate.